What if I told you that there's a spider that hunts fish? Unlike many other spiders that spin sticky webs to catch insects, this one, the fishing spider, ventures out onto the water to chase aquatic prey. You can find them lurking in wetlands and ponds, waiting for an unlucky minnow to get too close. Now the good thing is that I don't really have to go too far to find one of these. There's quite a few of them living at a pond near me. So what I'm gonna do is go there in the dark when these spiders will start to come out and hunt. The fishing spiders make up the genus of spiders known as Dolomates. This spider group is spread throughout the world with over 100 species discovered so far. Most of them are large semi-aquatic spiders that live and forage in or near bodies of water, like wetlands, ponds, and lakes. The type of fishing spider that I'm looking for tonight is Dolomedes triton, the six-spotted fishing spider. All right, I've arrived at the edge of this pond, and my goal here is to find a big fishing spider. The way I'm going to find one is by using my, my flashlight to search for eye shine. Fishing spiders have extremely reflective eyes, so I'll just scan my light on the shoreline and wait to see any sparkling spider eyes. All right, I see a pretty large eye shine that is out on the water, so it's got to be a fishing spider. I want a good size one, so I want to make sure it's big enough. Ooh, this one looks big. That is a nice sized one. All right, you can see on the surface of the water right there, that is my target, a six-spotted fishing spider. I have, as always, a nice container to catch it in, so hopefully this will be relatively simple. It's right there, it actually just went underwater a little bit, so it should be interesting. I got it. I got it. Yes, there we go. Success. My expedition had been worth it. At the bottom of this plastic cup is the large hairy arachnid that I came to find, the six-spotted fishing spider. I'm going to hold it in the container for now and examine it during the day. Well, here's a spider that I captured at the pond. And this one, this is a cool species. This is a six-spotted fishing spider. Now, I think fishing spiders are some of the most unique spiders you can find in North America. So I'm gonna take them out and you'll see why. Now, when handled, they tend to be really, really jumpy and quite nervous. So he might try to jump off. Okay. Really hope he's gonna stay here. All right, he settled down. Now you can see just how cool this spider is. It's a pretty big spider. Uh, if you're an arachnophobe, I'm sure this would not be your cup of tea, but they're so cool. You see where they get their name, those six spots that are on their abdomen, hence how they're called the six spotted fish. Oh, I don't want to jump on my face. Even for me, that would be a little much. So now she's getting a little more active. Uh, if she just keeps crawling around, that'll be fine, as long as she doesn't try to spring off. But, you know, the reason I'm worried about her escaping is that they're such fast and athletic spiders. And that fact really allows us to learn quite a bit about their lifestyle. They're not a web builder, like, say, some of the orb weavers or the cobweb spiders. These guys are active hunters. They actively search for prey, and they will actively hunt it down if they have to. So, you know, many spiders that live on webs are basically blind. These have extremely good vision. They have well-developed eyes. And, of course, they have very good sensory abilities. So their legs are covered in tiny hairs that are so sensitive to vibration. So when they're sitting on the water surface, they can detect the tiniest ripple and then run over and investigate. And that's where they spend the most time hunting. They sprawl themselves out on the water surface. They're extremely light spiders. You know, if you handle a spider this size of a different species, you can feel some weight. I can barely feel this creature on my hand, he's so light. So using all these abilities, they just sit on the water surface and they wait for something like an aquatic insect, a small fish that can take down prey that's five times their size. So fish or tiny frogs are not off the menu. And they rush over, they grab it, 
they'll sink their fangs in, envenomate it, and then eat it. The fangs of the spider are its most potent hunting weapons. They connect to the spider's venom glands, which means that it can inject venom into prey. The fishing spider's toxins allow it to take down food that it otherwise couldn't handle. When it attacks a large prey item, like a fish, it simply has to bite it and wait for the venom to do its work. Now, they're not dangerous to people. Even though this guy might look a little scary, he's totally harmless to me. He could bite me. I mean, his fangs are big enough to pierce my skin. But you see, he doesn't want to. They're not an aggressive creature. All he wants to do is find a nice, safe place to escape to. Now, another really cool thing about fishing spiders is that, at least in North America, they're relatively common. So if you have a pond or a stream, a swamp near you, there's probably a species of fishing spider that makes its home there. It could be this one, the six-spotted fishing spider. It could be one of the many other species that lives in North America. So you should get out and investigate. You never know what you might be finding very close to home. All right, this has been a really, really interesting creature to interact with. And, you know, I realize that for most people, spiders are never going to be their, uh, their favorite animal. But there's, you can see here, there's no reason to fear them. They don't want to hurt you. And especially with the more harmless species like a fishing spider, they really can't hurt you. Uh, they might look a little creepy, but if you really study them a little bit closer, you'll see they're amazing animals and they're really worthy of our interest and not necessarily our fear. Creatures like the fishing spider are what keep me coming back to explore nature. Their secretive lives never fail to fascinate me, drawing me to dig deeper into the secrets of the wild. If you would like to accompany me on this quest, subscribe to Nature Tales and check out some of my other adventures, like this one, where I hunted down a foreign insect, the invasive lanternfly. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you next time.